talking to one of our local leaders in the real estate industry here in Las Vegas, Mr. Mark Civic. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the WBNL Wandering Without Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 133. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, it's a it's a heat wave going on this weekend. 107 here in Anaheim. What the heck? Yeah, it's hotter here, and I don't even want. I can't deal with it. It's isn't it? What? what when does fall happen? The 21st. 20, or 22nd is uh, the yeah, autumnal yeah, equinox. Jen. autumnal equinox. That's right, the autumnal equinox. So I got to tell you something. I. It needs to cool off here. It is brutal uh, do, driving around, doing real estate out here right now, and this is just crazy. So I'm ready for coolness. I'm ready for coolness. But we have an excessive heat warning coming up again this weekend. Do you? I know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's horrible. Anyway, we got a great show on deck today. Jam, what, what, what do we got going on? Well, I want to... Uh, we've, we're bringing back somebody we've had on the show before because we're going to have him talk a little bit about this along with some other cool things that he's doing in the local real estate industry and and with supporting local businesses here in town which is near and dear to our heart here at WBNL Coaching because we're huge supporters of uh, local business owners which we all are it's right. Mr. Mark Civic and uh, so why don't we bring him in here and I'll just set up an introduction properly you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts Stitcher Spotify iHeartRadio Google Play and now on YouTube Mark and I go back 17 years. One at one point or another, <laughs> people that are as old as us or as long in the business as us, I've generally been their broker. Uh, in one of the large companies, I've been a broker. And, uh, we started back in the Prudential days, some 17 years ago, right, Mark? That's correct. 17 years ago, November 03. And yeah, and you've really you've really tracked. We're going to talk a lot today about the, the path you've taken and how you've used your background. I know you had a corporate background. You brought all that leadership and that to the space of real estate and you've really excelled. So congratulations on a great career, a great second career yeah, uh, here yeah. in the industry, right? Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. But uh, I had a good mentor, Jan, if you remember back in Prudential. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a good gr- team of people that were there. We yes. were talking before the show. Uh, how a lot of us have come full circle and there's still a core group of us that a lot of us started at Prudential, now Berkshire Hathaway. It'll always be Prudential to me. Yes. Always Prudential to me. So let's talk first with, I I can't believe I run into you all the time and you're always telling me you still are running this mastermind group called No Excuses. So tell everybody a little bit about that and how long you've been doing this and what the benefits of a mastermind group are. It, it's probably one of the biggest successes I've had. And when I was a brand new agent, I could be in a conference room and Jan was giving us a speech about accountability. And there were four or five of us. It was myself, Doug Bradford, Linda Stiegel, who's still in the business, yeah. Jim Tegmeyer, and Marie Susie, who is still in the business also. And, uh, you know, you're real estate agents. You have no talk to or commiserate with or get questions answered. Right. So we took a, uh, we swore an oath of of blood and we created No Excuses. And No Excuses was an accountability group. And we picked five people because it fit in the car comfortably. (laughs) And uh, uh, there was no discussing your family or your kid's soccer game. It was all about business. It was all about real estate. And first uh, first, we'd go have coffee or breakfast somewhere, and part of it was the beginning of the Be Vocal, Support Local. You couldn't start the meeting at a, the green chain coffee place. You had to go find. And at that point, it was not easy finding local coffee shops. So we would go support. We would go support these places, and we would go introduce ourselves to the manager, tell them we didn't really want anything, that we were local realtors supporting local business and they'd get all excited. They would come sit down with us or they'd send coffee cake, whatever. Um, and then each one of us would plan a day in rotation. 
Now, mm -hmm. remember, we're all green. We're all brand new. The, the high rises are coming out of the ground like right. no tomorrow. We have no idea. So I think my very first tour was the Mondo tour. I didn't know where to park the damn car. I didn't know how to get in the parking garage. But um, we, we all got in the car. We all went. We went. I think it was um, uh, it was one of the high rises. And so uh, knowledge is power. And I wound up selling units after I visited uh, the, the high rises. So each week somebody else would take the would take the meeting and then we got into things like um well what happens if you run into somebody who wants to buy something how do you split it you got five people well we started writing policy so if it's your day it's your lead okay nice. that's okay cool. and so now it's uh almost 17 years later i'm still the last of the Last man Origin. standing. I'm the last man standing. I get the bottle of wine. Um, but there is a good vivacious group of agents uh, that have taken. We've run with it. We've met with uh, uh, Joe Heck. We've met with Mayor Goodman. Wow. We've been in. We've been invited by builders to give our expertise on naming streets and colors of, of properties. Wow. Uh, we've expanded a little bit to things to do in Las Vegas. So basically when you have a person in the car and they, well, that, well, that's Speed Vegas. So we called Speed Vegas. We went there and they actually gave us each a very high expensive sports car, which is near and dear to my heart. And we got, oh, wow. a couple, we got a couple laps on the track, which we then promoted on. So the whole idea of be vocal, support local is, or of, of the no excuses is to encompass be vocal, support local. But it's about uh, education. We will go to uh, Jan. If you had a listing, we would all visit the listings and give us give your remarks that your price too high or you need mm -hmm. to clean this up or or what have you. So, right. and it's and a you great. End up, you end up it's accountability, but you all it also I know from from doing this with you when I was in your as your manager. Uh, that you're you're supporting each other outside of that weekly Wednesday. You always did it on a Wednesday, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, still doing it on a Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. And you might help each other out. But that, so talk a little bit more about this be vocal support local because you really took that to another level and you have a Facebook page and some great videos on that. And I I, I oh my gosh, Matt, how often do we talk about the whole local business spotlight? We call it a local business spotlight as a, a technique right. that all that we talk about it all the time. And the the videos that Mark Mark has up on his site are fantastic. They just hit it perfectly just nailed yeah. it it's awesome thank you thank you um you know I, I came from an entrepreneurial background my father was a retailer and he got crushed by the big box realtors and wound up going out of business which was tragic and sad because um he was very good at his craft but be vocal support local came to me when i started showing property and i found people coming in from chicago or new york or wherever they're coming in from and they thought the capital of Nevada was on top of the stratosphere. And they didn't, <laughs> they didn't think we had any kind of life but the strip. Right. So I, start, I started investigating local places. And when I would take these clients out, I would say, well, this is where the locals go. This is what we do. This is where we live. This is what we do. We don't necessarily go to the strip. And I started frequenting, frequenting them more and more and more. And I got to be known. So when I would walk in with my clients, they would go, hey, Mark, let, let me send you a round of drinks or the desserts on us or what have you. Um, made me look good in front of my clients. And the proprietor knew I was bringing them business. Great. So, um, did, did you go ahead. Also, I was just going to ask you, did, so you created a Facebook page. And do you still actively go out and looking for and searching for new places and new businesses? So let's talk a little bit about what how, what's been your experience um, during the pandemic. And because I think this is such a, a crucial point right now. I feel like so many small businesses are, are potentially going to go out of business due yep. to the economy. And we're going to have it worse here in Nevada just because of our hospitality industry and how slow it's going to be to get everybody to get, come back to Vegas. Right. So what has been your experience now with small business owners? Are you talking to them or, cause it's a time to support it even more in my opinion. 
Yeah. You're, well, you're absolutely right. And I've identified restaurants and coffee shops and um, retailers. Um, so these are the people that you went to to get your kids uh, soccer equipment or your little league hats and T-shirts. Yet you go to the big mail, the big Internet providers and so forth and so on. Now is the time to pay it back. And I want to implore all agents, you know, you don't have to go to every day. Your your four or five dollars is totally appreciated in the local coffee shop. We want them to survive. They're our friends, they're our neighbors. We also want them to use us as as realtors. And uh, there's a lot of internet competition out there, and they seem to just uh, come around when the when the money is good. They take the the our neighbors' money, they sell their houses, but they don't invest in the community. And I would like to see realtors uh, support local business and invest in the community because it, it, to me, that's extremely important. I like it. So if you're watching on our video, which you can get uh, over at our YouTube channel, WBNL Coaching, uh, or over at our show notes at WBNL Podcast, we're showing the Facebook page, but you also have, I mean, you've gone all out. It looks like you have an Instagram. Uh, yes. You're, inc you're encouraging, and that's the call to action, encouraging people to go out and take the a photo and so forth and, and post it and, and show how we're all get, giving back and supporting. And you've got the Facebook page, also a, a website, be vocal support local .com. Good stuff. Right, right. You, you see that little, uh, the one in the upper left-hand corner, that is the Italian American Club, one of my yeah. favorite places. Uh, I posted that uh, during the pandemic with over 3,100 hits on people for that people wow. and uh, noticed me and says, I've always seen that place. I've always known about that place. I've never gone in that. I'm going into that place. I want to try it. So now, see, uh, I like that so much. And I got to tell you, well done. It's all about video. It's another thing we preach here at WB right. coaching. Absolutely. You got to get on video. You got to be able to, so you, how are you doing this? This is really well done. You have somebody that, that you've, I've, with I've, that I've employed a professional videographer and I'm, I'm spending some money out of my own pocket for this. Um, mm -hmm. I took the Be Vocal Support Local and I actually had the trademark. I had it trademarked and registered. So I wow, own great. I own it. Awesome. And I've actually found it online in Hawaii and a couple other places. And I don't I really don't want any money out of it, but I would like them to dovetail with me, the mothership, so that I can mm -hmm. say um, I have a cousin in real estate in Wisconsin that he's going to pick up and use the same thing. So I'd like to take it nationwide. It's, hey, it's not it's, about it. You're, it's you're, not, build, you're building your own referral network at the same time. That's awesome. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So that's a great idea. And we need to talk a little bit more about that because I know of another situation that's similar to this, where you provide the infrastructure and the support and help and help them understand and how they can then do exactly what you're doing in their local community. And it's very big. You could take this, you could just start regionally and move. It's a great right, idea. Right, I love right. I love that so much for you. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the, your leadership. So I've known you for these 17 years. When did you first get involved in our local association of realtors? Because so, you worked your way up uh, from just being an active member to where you are now, currently the vice president of LBR. Well, about eight years ago, I took, I, I think under your tutelage, uh, the RRG program. Yes, Redu I remember you did that. Back then it was 120 hours. It took a year to get it in. <laughs> and that was the tip of the iceberg. Once you start uh, learning about that and you go, well, I want to be a better realtor. I want to be involved. I want to be. So from that, I go, well, what's next? And then it was grievance. And mm -hmm. I sat on grievance for two or three years and I got promoted to professional standards. And I started seeing the cases and noticing you know, who was doing what to who and what the problems were. And I thought, well, maybe I can affect this a little bit more. So I made a run at the board and I did one term on the board, which is two years. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you the first year, much like starting in real estate, it's like drinking from a fire hose. You right. have no idea what's going on. You're just coming at you. You don't know how to vote. You don't know parliamentary procedure, so forth and so on. <laughs> so I took, uh, I finished my first term in two years and I thought, you know what? I'm going back for a second term. So first year, 
second term, I felt I was much more effective and I had a total handle on what's going on. So uh, I'm a list guy. And the, the next thing on the list was treasurer. Was treasurer, how do I get to that? So I got elected treasurer. Um, I can truly tell you I left the financial department in better shape than I found it. We got rid of the accountant that was uh, kind of not good causing some issues and so forth. We went to an outside but I used to have to go down there for an hour or two and sign hundreds and hundreds of checks. Wow. I mean, that that's really good in the 1970s, but not in the, not in the, the 2020s. Yeah. Right. So uh, I worked with Wendy and uh, on my watch, we got an outside accounting firm, which is ultra high security. And when I left the accounting, when I left the treasurer's office, I turned it over to Jillian Bachelor. And God bless her. She can now sign all the things on her phone to go down oh, there. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, I mean, learning how to run the, the association, you get involved in the budget right. and you get to see what's being spent and what's, you know, what's, what's coming in and how member driven we are and how our whole, the revenue is on membership. Right. So, so so then you, so next step was where you are now? Next step was vice president. And I, I took that on, um, you know, it was my own strategic plan. And the, the last box on my checklist is this next one is there president elect. And in order to be, you know, this is the most important position at LVR next to CEO. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can <clears throat> jump from the board mm -hmm. to president elect without understanding the financials and the right. budgets and and how many budgets we create for different scenarios and how we can look for different revenue streams coming in. Um, it's not a popularity contest. Right. And Lord, Lord knows I have my, you know, people that don't like me, but um, <laughs> I, I have a business background. I have a business background and I plan to run it like a business with economies of scale and alternate uh, forms of revenue and, so, well, I want to tell you, Mark, you have my full throated endorsement for sure, because thanks. of knowing you for as long as I have. I seriously appreciate how you are agent centric. Um, you're coming from representing all of us and using that business background and getting in there and not being afraid to shake things up because I know your personality and you're not going to be <laughs> one on the sidelines that says, oh, no, we're just going to let that go. No, so you no. have earned the right to, to be in this position running for this. And this is the way it's supposed to be. And God love you because I... Uh, I've been involved in some committees and, and that is apparently going to be all I'm going to do uh, because I'm going to leave it to people like you to take care of us. Okay. So we're, we're definitely behind you and um, you've well, got my vote. Jan, you're extremely important to me. You've always been involved in my career from day one and we've all, what, wherever we went, whatever brokerage we were in, whenever our paths crossed, it was always mutually respected. Um, this is the, this is not a, a popularity contest. I, I've I set a plan in place, and it, again, it's the most important position. And experience counts here. There's no playbook for the pandemic. That's we, right. We, we showed up. We have an executive team that's kept the doors open. That's made us an essential business. That's allowed us to do business. That's kept the members. We've only lost a couple hundred members. We put together, uh, I championed a payment plan. We just assume yeah. you pay, we pay a little bit and stay on board till you make a sale and get current then to kick you to the curb and say, well, you didn't do bad. I'm happy to see that. I'm glad to hear that you were behind <clears throat> that. And I see that just with the next level of the dues coming out, the, um, the MLS uh, fees <coughs> uh, payment structure. And I think that's important. And honestly, I know that the numbers are moving up. We've got a surge in people because yes. of what's happening, going to real estate school. There's more people. As a matter of fact, because of the pandemic, I have a couple of people that are trying to get on our, that are joining our team that are newer and they are get, just getting their license. They had to go to uh, Utah. They went to St. George to take the test. Correct. Because, I've heard that. Yeah. Because, um, for locally here, because it's the where the Pearson View testing is multiple types of tests, licensing tests, and because of what they're having to do, 
and the delay and the backup of just v Las Vegas people wanting to get to take the test, you got to go to Arizona or Utah or the first available for our person was December to take the test. Wow. Wow. That just tells you the schools are in, I, I know through key school uh, working with Mike over there that that's up, which that's good for the membership is the whole point. So instead yeah. of retracting, I think the membership is going to surge and we really need to have leaders like you helping everybody. Uh, I've gotten more involved back uh, running a team now. I'm, uh, I love how we can do everything via zoom. Uh, I've come to the general uh, membership meetings that way. And, you know, it's, I think it's getting people a little bit more involved. What's your take on that? Do you think we have a little bit more engagement or less? Um, we've Remember? always had, we've always had not a big engagement. The voting is rather abysmal, if you will. Yes. Okay. Um, and there's been big talk about transparency. So we've opened it up to, the Zoom meetings and expected a flood, and it's it's evolving. Right. Um, you, you know, there's no more excuses. If you if you are a member in Pahrump and you go, well, I don't want to drive all the way in. Now right. you can get on a Zoom call. Exactly. So um, we'd love to see more involvement. We'd love to have uh, hundreds of people on the call today at one o'clock. Is the meet the candidates. When we did it in person last year, there was 20, 25 people. It was kind of disappointing. Wow. Isn't it sad? It's, 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 a, it's kind of a reflection all the way up of, of whether people want to be involved or not. And it's, you know, in, in all levels of our society. So we'll have to see. Maybe th this is going to be better, I think. And they've been promoting it. So yes. uh, I think that's a good opportunity. It'll be an interesting for somebody moderating that and all the candidates get it. Yeah, I think, the, I think the election committee is moderating it with the, the – otherwise it would be a free-for-all. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Um, but it'd be I like just, in person, I'm sure. So I, I would have, you know, I'm missing the whole in person thing because I like to go to the offices mm -hmm. and and talk to the Jan O'Briens or the Mark Starks or mm -hmm. what have you. Um, and yeah, I kind of miss that. I'm old school, so that was my right. glad handing and so forth. So now I'm trying to embrace the technology and figure out. Well, you got how, it here. Yeah, no, I, I, and I truly appreciate both of you because. I, I, I don't have the capacity or the reach that you do. Well, you know, the beauty of what you're doing, Mark, you know, you, you said you're old school, but you're really not. You know, I mean, you've been, maybe you've been in the business for a while, but you really have adapted. And what you were talking about, how people didn't know what was going to happen around COVID is so true. And the fact that you have been responsible for helping, you know, LVR to be a little bit more compassionate and a little bit more, let's, you know what, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit here. Because I love your, your tagline, you know, an agent for the, you know, um, uh, putting agents first, because you can tell that you do that. And that's what, that's what LVR needs for crying out loud. So, you know, I, I applaud you for your efforts and, and all of this. And, and this, the pandemic has, has had a very weird side effect of being able to connect people in ways that we haven't right. connected before. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that turnout is today at one o'clock, because I think you're going to see a lot, lot more than 25 people uh, show uh, up. And I, and, and I hope so. And I hope everybody has questions, but right. to your, to your agent centric, um, you know, when I left the corporate world abruptly back in 03, I decided to want to do something with a passion. Yep. And mm -hmm. I know Jan's asked me to be team leader back in the day and so forth. And I've always just wanted to do my brand, my real estate, my Your thing. Way. <clears throat> exactly. But my, my point being is I, I am agent centric. I don't care what brokerage you're with. I'm not here to recruit for a brokerage. That's not my, I'm here to support agents. Now the opposition and, and previous uh, presidents have been broker owners. Now, whether they say it or not, there's- There's an undercurrent there of-, of course. Uh, there's an, there's an old yeah. agenda and, and, and we all know it, okay? So- I agree, I so I, I love that. We're, well, listen, let's get the word out. Um, I love where you're headed with everything. Uh, keep doing what you're doing with, uh, you're, I know you will, because you'll, cons even though this is going to be even more responsibility for you, the no excuses, the, your passion project here, be vocal, support local. I'm right there with you with the passion on no that. Kidding. And yeah. so well done with everything. And let's, uh, let's, we're here to support you getting to that next step and you'll be supporting, um, Aldo Martinez, who I love yes. dearly is our next president. And then you, uh, get through this and let's get you into that president elect and then you're going to be it. 
you'd be but, the next guy and then we'll I, have you I back on talk about what you're doing to <laughs> right. change the world i'm a ham i'll come on anytime all right <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, and Aldo, so just so you know, um, I have a tremendous relationship with Aldo, but we put together a three-year strategic plan. Nice. And, and the idea is to have the consistency. Now is not the time to change the captains of the ship. That's if right. he's the captain, I'm, I'm on the on-deck circle. I know what the plan is and so forth. I, I can't see bringing in people that are not part of that, that didn't help write the plan. There you go. I like that because some continuity and consistency yes. with it all yeah, exactly. and move us forward. And I'm very happy with the things that are happening in our association. I haven't always been that way, but I like the direction of where things are going. Communication needs to always be strong. And, and it's hard to get all the members to get involved. It's just the way it is. But it's just it's just like running a brokerage. It's 20 percent of the people yeah. get involved. Right. So well, we'll see what my, happens. My, my, I'm extremely accessible. Well, I'll take the phone call till 10 o'clock at night. Um, I'm not going to go down the list of 14,000 agents and go, Hey, what bothers you? But if, <laughs> if, if you yeah. have a problem or a concern, I'll You'll hear listen. you out. I'll, I'll listen to it. I may agree with you, with you. I may enlighten you. Um, like that. And I don't necessarily always want to surround, surround myself with the self, the same style thinkers. I need to hear what the other side is Very good. because there's two sides to this. That's right. I just want to move, move the industry for because we're in danger. I mean, we're getting we're getting shot at every day. They're picking Absolutely. us. They're trying to pick us apart. Absolutely. So a lot to take care of. There's a a lot uh, of responsibility to to, to be honest. Yeah. Because you're yeah. exactly right when you look at what's happening with Zillow. Uh, the iBuyers coming back into the market and wanting to. I mean, come on, Open Door. Uh, even though they shut down a little bit here, came onto the scene and be, move into the top, one of the top four brokerages in town um, in transactions because of. Um, just their model, you know, prior well, to all this. So there's a lot happening that we have to be aware of to support, to protect our realtor industry. We still do it better than any other algorithm Absolutely. out, out yeah. there. No and I, I don't know if I mentioned, but we we're, I'm putting together a commercial and I've worked with Christine into the outreach and it's a series of uh, pictures of what the realtors do in the community as uh, food banks and blood banks and mm -hmm. hydrating the homeless and clothing drives and so forth and so on. And it basically says, we're the realtors, we're your friends, we're your neighbors, we're, we're during the virus. Oh, by the way, the internet iBuyers, they took their cash and they left. That's right. They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> they, they just did. They left high and dry and uh, they, they didn't put anything back in the community. So. Great point. I like that angle. See, very good. Good thing to end on here, Mark. Good luck with everything as you move forward in this campaign season. The voting starts uh, 921, I think. 921, 922, and 923 till 2 p.m. So. All right. So if you're listening and you're a local Las Vegas realtor, uh, we recommend highly you vote for Mr. Mark Civic. Well, I, I, I truly appreciate it. Matt, always good to see you. Jan, love you dearly. Um, okay. It, it's just been a it's been a great ride and i'm not done yet right on we'll see you we'll Good see deal. you soon my friend okay. all right have a great day thanks bye -bye. thanks so much bye-bye bye -bye. you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet join us and subscribe on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify iHeartRadio, google play and now on youtube that's a wrap for episode 123 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. You can get all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Make sure you go over to uh, Mark's uh, Facebook page, the B Vocals Choose support Local. Support, support local. local. There you go. Um, he does have some great videos on there. So, And there is a link to that over in the show notes. So I really respect uh, that. It's funny. My wife and I were out last weekend just kind of going for a drive just to get out of the house and, you know, to go around. And we were down by... Uh, uh, our favorite beach, Jan, down there in uh, uh, um, yeah, um, uh, Crystal, Crystal Crystal Cove, and we are we're driving by some of the restaurants. And like Javier's is down there, and all of them were open. And we're like, oh my god, let's go sit out in the patio and you know have uh, uh, a little lunch. At the yeah, exactly. And you know what? We we pulled in and we said, you know what? This is not right. We need to go back to Anaheim Hills and we need to support the local businesses that are there. So we did. So we swapped at a wonderful beachside uh, lunch for you know. 
our, our, our local uh, uh, hamburger joint here in Anaheim Hills, and I felt really good about it. And you know what? <laughs> The beer was just as good there as it would be at Hobby. <laughs> it's true that. And you're supporting the local <laughs> exactly. uh, guys that you go support all the time. And that is, this whole giving back is so important right now. And I love that he has been championing that well before it was, you know, the end right. thing to do, you know. So it's good stuff. And he's, you know, he's really has worked his way up and I really do support him. And I like his approach to things. He's no nonsense. Um, so uh, he's got my vote. And... We're happy to have him chat with us today about what he's going to do out there and what he's doing and how he's been. I mean, come on. He is a walking, talking example of how to do your business and tie this local thing in and not make it all about you and your real estate business and be that annoying real estate agent, but right. giving back to the community. So that's all. Awesome. I'm telling you, just let me get back on the soapbox again about supporting your local businesses. I mean, it's crazy. You know, because I was in Florida for, for three months and being home, the, the number of chain type of stores just in our little area here that are going out of business is crazy. I mean, I can think of four or five big stores that are not going to be there come, you know, the next, you know, 2021. Yeah. And that's going to even make it harder for some of these smaller local stores to stay in business because there's going to be less traffic coming to the area. So you really wow. need to get out there and do whatever you can to support local, like your favorite little coffee shop there by the, um, by the post office jam. Yes. Um, I mean, it's still there and it's still, it's got a good clientele, but you well, know, you're the on. one who needs to go there. I you go know, there every time I, I'm visiting I and have, I love that coffee I shop. I have gone there. And All like, right, good I'm, man. So that's the thing. Don't so, go to the Starbucks that's around the corner. Go to that place. Right, exactly. So well, anyway, know, they may not even be open. That's the point. I I can't. No, find they a are. That's that's the thing. I, I I looked at it because I you know I have a PO box, so I go to the, that post office quite often, and I always check that out. And that's it's it's in a weird ass location, you know. Yeah, true. So you know you have to have word of mouth to to get to you know to a place like that to stay in business. But anyway, I think it's more important now than ever to support your local businesses. Which you make, so. Very good. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Yeah, and uh, right. try, try to stay. Uh, stay. Cool. If you're in the West Coast, anywhere in the Pacific or in the in the you know the Southwest of uh, this country, try to you know stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Stay cool. Yeah, and I have say an enjoyable yeah. holiday weekend as we record this. Yeah, this and you know what, you guys? Here's the thing: or, we're our, we're so close uh, to being able to kind of the curve to be flattened. We? Do not get out there this weekend and mess, thing, mess things up for everybody. If you go out, mask up for crying out loud. Just do, because if you don't, schools are never gonna open <laughs> and none of this other stuff is gonna happen. So, you know, Let's make sure you're safe and sane when you're out there this holiday weekend. Be safe and sane. I like that. That's right. And you know what? Be forever wandering, but not lost. There it is. <laughs>